guys, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Now today I'm going to be making another faux analog beat and it is for drumsticks. I saw this image and I said, oh my gosh, that's a pretty convincing look of a chicken drumstick, but it's absolutely not chicken. It is made from Yuba. Yuba is made when soy milk is brought to a boil and a skin naturally forms on the surface, just as you would when you boil milk, for example. That skin is removed and dried, and that is Yuba. It can be reconstituted in water and added to soups. It can be used as a skin in dim sum. It has all kinds of uses and it is full of protein. And today I'm going to be using it to make drumsticks. A few of you lovelies got in touch with me via social media. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe with me. It comes from a blog called Woon Hang and I'll put a link down below to the original recipe. I'm gonna be making a few little tweaks to it and it looks absolutely delicious. So Woon Hang grew up in Malaysia and would often see these vegetarian drumsticks as an option. And I am so excited to taste this because this is something that is not new, but it is new to me. And it looks absolutely amazing. The Yuba skin actually kind of wrinkles up and it looks very similar to chicken skin. Amazing, but I really wanna know what this tastes like. I've had Yuba before in soups, but never prepared as a meat before. So let's go ahead and make this. So the first thing you're going to need is Yuba. Now, when I was growing up, my mom would buy it in packages about this size and it was very dry and crackly and she would have to reconstitute it in water. Wunhen recommends the Yuba that you can find in the freezer section. Check this out. Look, look at the size of this. This is folded in half. So this is the top of the vat of soy milk. So there was a very large pot. Now there are several slices of this. I found this in the freezer section, but isn't it incredible? This is just a half sheet. She likes this because she says it's more pliable than the dry form. And I like it because it's beautiful. Let me show you what it looks like in full size. And look at this. <laughs> Let's open this up. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Look how big it is. Look at this. Isn't that incredible? It's enormous. So cool. <laughs> now it covers the entire surface of my countertop here and it is very flexible and look how transparent it is. Oh my gosh. So cool. Look, it's just like parchment, but very, very supple. Look at this. Oh, there's one other piece that didn't. Okay, so look at this. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? It's like transparent and thin. Wow. <laughs> so cool. So I took this directly out of my freezer and it is very, very tender still. So I'm going to use about half of this and we're gonna cut this into strips, about an inch to an inch and a half in width. I'm gonna do some thinner ones and some wider ones because we might need some wider ones for the wider part of the drumstick. So this just goes really quickly. Put these into a large bowl. They're so cool, look how transparent they are. They have like the weight and some sort of the feel of a plastic bag, it's amazing. Now it's time to reconstitute our strips of tofu skin. So I'm gonna add three cups of water. And the skins are going to absorb this water and the color is gonna change a little bit. They're gonna get a little bit lighter in color. Look, already it's lightening. I'm gonna let that soak just for a couple of minutes. Amazing. Look, already it's changing. Just let that sit for just a minute. Get another bowl ready. What we're trying to do is get these really pliable and supple again. You don't want too much water, otherwise these are gonna be less flavorful. Oh, isn't that amazing? Look at that. So cool. In a small bowl, we're going to add one teaspoon of chicken-free chicken powder. So this would be like a vegetable bouillon. Right in there. And a half teaspoon of sugar. One teaspoon of salt half teaspoon of pepper, a quarter teaspoon of five spice, which is a blend of five spices. 
which include star anise, cinnamon, a little bit of clove. I don't know what the other two are. Ginger powder, maybe? Lovely. Now the cornstarch is gonna help bind things together. So, one, two, three. Now we're going to add quarter cup of water. And this will be the chicken seasoning. Now, we're going to bring back our strips and pour this over the top. Now, this is a half batch. I'm just going to pour half of this on top. And massage to coat. Make sure all the strips have the seasoning on it. So, set that aside for just a moment. And I'm going to wash my hands. So for the drumstick part, or the bone of the chicken, we're going to be using this. And this is sugar cane. I found this in the frozen food section at my Asian market. Look at it right there. It's already peeled for me and frozen. Sugar cane, of course, is where we get our pure cane sugar from, but it can be chewed on as a snack. It can also be juiced for a refreshing drink. I have actually never had fresh sugar cane. I mean, this is fresh frozen sugar cane, but it's still new to me. So we need to prepare this to make the bone of our chicken, but I also want to give it a taste because I've never had it before. So the sugar cane, we're going to cut into sticks so we can wrap the yuba on them. If you don't have sugar cane, you can also use popsicle sticks or carrot sticks or even lemongrass. Ooh, it smells sweet. It smells a little bit, it smells a little bit sweet, a little vegetal. Hmm. And just cut these into sticks. We only need 10 for the recipe. Alrighty, let's give this a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm. It's very juicy and succulent. Yet fibrous. Mmm. It's kind of like tea. It reminds me of chrysanthemum tea a bit. It's just very lightly sweetened. And the fibers readily separate from the juice. You can just pull the fibers right out. Mmm. Really nice. Really nice. So the next time I see fresh sugarcane offered at the Asian market, I'm definitely picking some up. This, of course, has already been peeled. Sugarcane has a skin on the outside. It looks a little bit like bamboo, very woody. And then you peel it, and this is what's inside. So buying it frozen, you can skip that step. So while the frozen is pretty good, I am imagining the fresh tastes even better. Now we need to make some glue so that the yuba skins can stick to our sugar cane. So we're going to just use some more cornstarch. Two tablespoons. To one tablespoon of water. And whisk that together. And it's going to make a pretty thick paste. Wow, very thick paste. I can't even whisk that. I just made oobleck. <laughs> Non-Newtonian substance. Super cool, right? So the way oobleck works is if you, if you hit it, it's hard. But then if you push it, your finger just melts in. Isn't that cool? So it flows, yet it also is firm. You might need a little bit more water. It's being a little too Newtonian or non-Newtonian, whatever it is. Take a piece of sugar cane and two thirds of it we're going to paint with the slurry mixture, the glue. It, isn't it amazing? It doesn't really spread, but if you just let it sit on there, it does kind of spread. Okay, so dipped. Now we're gonna take a strip. I think this one is a good one for later. Now we're going to take a strip of our seasoned yuba and start wrapping around our sugar cane. You want to leave some of it sticking out like a handle and the rest we're just going to wrap around and make it kind of fat. 
just like you would a drumstick. How inventive is this? I love it. Some pieces want to break, but that's okay. We have a lot. So we're going to crisscross this a bit. So this twisting gives us the kind of like meaty layers and we're building it up so it looks like a drumstick. So this process is a bit time consuming and that's why it was recommended in the recipe to just make a full batch and then you can freeze these and eat them later. It's definitely easier when the strip is nice and long and continuous. It wants to stay in place better rather than having these short strips. So I'm very curious not only how this tastes, but what the texture is like. How meaty is this? If you haven't seen my wheat gluten video, I'll put a link down below to that. That's another faux meat. It's an ancient recipe. People have been vegetarian for a very long time. And that shows you how you can take wheat protein and make it into something that has a very meaty texture without any meat in it at all. In the recipe, it says to wrap this like a mummy, and I'm trying to keep the strips thin. And I'm doing that because I feel like it would hold better in place when it has more surface area. Okay, let me keep going here. That looks kind of like a drumstick. Kind of amazing. It looks kind of like a drumstick, doesn't it? So now that we've wrapped the stick, we're going to take a piece of plastic wrap and place our drumstick in there, wrap it up, and then proceed to twist it. And that's really going to round out the end, twist it on this side too. And that's what's really going to give us that drumstick shape. Amazing. Look at that. It looks so great. And now we're going to place this in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes so that everything can kind of harden up and stiffen and kind of take shape before we cook it. So I'll see you in a little bit. I'm going to continue making more of these and chill them and then we'll come back and cook them. <laughs> see you in a little bit. All right, my lovelies, I have finished wrapping all of my drumsticks and I have to tell you, it's it's a chore. It takes a while and be prepared to put on a podcast, put on some good music because you're going to be rapping for a while. Definitely recommend going on the side of wider when you cut your strips, inch and a half for sure, because the little ones tend to tear and that's not good. The longer piece of Yuba you have, the better it comes with wrapping because then your ends tend to kind of tuck under better. So they get nice and browned on the outside. You could use barbecue sauce. You can use any sauce you like, but I'm going to be using the sauce that's included in the recipe. So I've got a little bowl here with a tablespoon of water. I've got a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. And this is about a teaspoon of dark soy sauce. That will give us some nice caramelly color. And we're going to add some honey, about a teaspoon. This, of course, is honey that came out of my own hives. I have a second channel that <laughs> includes video that I did chronicling my beehive adventures, or beekeeping adventures. So I do still keep bees. My bees are alive. And it's been a wonderful <laughs> hobby. I've been doing it now. This will be my fifth season. So... Go check that out if you want to learn more about beekeeping. So that is going to be our glaze sauce. Okay, so set that aside. Here are the drumsticks. And the chilling process does seem to have the Yuba holding its shape a bit better. So let's do this. <laughs> they kind of look like masking tape. <laughs> now we're going to take this glaze that we just made and we're just going to paint these gently and we're going to let it soak in for just a couple of minutes and then we'll put a second coat on. Now do this very gently. We don't want to disturb all those beautiful layers. They are sticking nicely at the moment and we don't want to wreck all of our work. So I had a combination air fryer before, but it could put on me. It was no fault of the machine itself. It was actually my outlet. So I had to get another one and I picked up this one. This very different design than my last one. Here is the instant vortex and it has a drawer as many of these air fryers do. 
this is the four person capacity. So lightly oiling the inside surface of my air fryer and I'm supposed to preheat this for a couple minutes. Temperature 325 degrees. That's very intuitive. And I'm gonna set the timer for two minutes. Whoa, it's called the instant vortex. Definitely sounds like a vortex. So I'm preheating that. <laughs> <laughs> this is smelling plasticky and it said it would on its first run. Definitely smells plasticky. Okay, when's this ready? Is it, has it been two minutes yet? What's beeping? Oh, it says add food. Okay. So it's preheated already, I guess. All right my trivet down so that I don't scorch my countertop. Pretty roomy basket. Now I'm going to place the chicken in there. I think I can fit all of them in there. Cool. Now I'm going to pop these back in there. Move this one a little over. And Air fry these for six to eight minutes until they're nice and golden. <laughs> and then we'll actually give these a taste and see how chicken-like they are. All right, air fryer. Uh, I guess I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. There's our beef. Our chicken drumsticks, chicken, are done. So let's see how they turned out. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, they look great. Oh my gosh, look at these. They look amazing, amazing. This was super fast. So I'm hoping these are hot inside. They were only in there for seven minutes, but they look done. I mean, Yuba, this already technically cooked. It was just kind of dried out, so. I don't know, let's see, okay. Alrighty, let's grab these drumsticks out of here. Put them on a plate. They look great. Really good. So my air fryer stopped halfway through cooking and asked me to turn the food, at which point I used a little bit of vegetable oil and gave these a little brush on top and then turned them just so they wouldn't stick on the bottom, but also gives them this nice kind of sheen. Look, I mean, look at that, pretty impressive. Alrighty, my lovelies, my tofu skin drumsticks are complete. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with how they turned out. I mean, look at this one. I mean, look at that. Amazing, right? how the skin is believable, but more importantly, has a taste. Let's see, here we go. Itadakimasu. <laughs> the inside even is impressive. Look at that, amazing. It doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes exactly how I remember Yuba skin or tofu skin tasting like. It tastes a bit like, how do I describe that flavor? Let me have another bite. <laughs> it tastes like concentrated tofu. <laughs> which essentially is what it is. And tofu, I would argue, it isn't exactly tasteless. It definitely has a flavor. It's not unpleasant. It's very plain, but it is pretty well seasoned. I think I would amp up the bouillon flavor in this, maybe double the amount. 
probably depends on how salty your vegetable bouillon is, but I think I would double it. It's flavorful, but it could use even more flavor. And maybe some garlic powder, some onion powder, but I really wanted to try the recipe as it was written. And I can definitely taste the five spice in there and the soy sauce on the outside. I think maybe a little bit more sweetness, maybe a little bit of sugar to the actual Yuba seasoning as well, just to give it a little bit more depth. But look at that. The interior is very meat-like too. Very impressive. It does not taste like chicken. <laughs> Having said that, it's still quite delicious and it's very fun to eat. So if you're really craving that kind of meat on the bone kind of sensation or texture or experience, this does it very well. The textures are a little bit slippery. It's not so fibrous as say the wheat gluten, which was very, very similar in texture to meat. But the experience of actually biting into it like a chicken bone is pretty analogous. It's pretty amazing in terms of the type of verisimilitude that you can create just by wrapping seasoned tofu skin around a stick of sugar cane. Incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very impressed. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. That's how you can make drumsticks out of tofu skin. Pretty, pretty impressive. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website to get a printable version of this recipe. Yeah, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Drumstick.